have to confess that I've had a terrible, terrible habit, which is sleeping with anything that I'm wearing, rags, you name it, I'm wearing it to sleep. Really, we deserve to go to sleep with something just as beautiful as the garments that we sew for ourselves to wear during the day. Today, you'll see two pajamas, got a summer satin version and a winter plaid check version. Lots to see today, stay with me. Hi sewing friends, my name's Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are always stopping by, if you're new, you will find a lot of sewing in this channel, 100% sewing. And with every single video, you have things to take away for your own sewing at home. Lots of practical tips and tricks and actual sewing footage that you can see. If you think that's cool, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out when new videos go live. Today, I've got the Pine Cove pajamas to share with you. It's a brand new pattern release from Each to Stitch. When I found out that she was working on a pair of woven pajamas, I had an idea in my head about that classic type of pyjama that has a notched collar with piping and that sort of thing and I thought, oh, oh you know, probably have to miss out on that test because those types of pyjamas aren't really my style. I find that they're just too, like a blouse, they're just too formal, they look like a shirt or a blouse with all those collars and facings, I, I just don't think that effort belongs in a pyjama, just my opinion, I wouldn't want to sleep with a notched collar and a facing and things like that but when I saw the design of the pyjama I was pleasantly surprised actually super surprised and loved the design at first glance it's just very unique I've never seen a pyjama like that and yeah just super comfortable there's no closures no buttons none of that you don't need to sew that type of collar it's a different type of collar I'll show you the pictures here so you can stop guessing what I'm talking about it's a really cool design, made for woven fabrics. You have a top and a pant. The original design on the pyjama has a long sleeve and a long pant, you know, thinking of the cooler weather. So the uniqueness about this pyjama top is that it's wrapped over the front and you have a collar that goes all along the edge. And the way that you close this on the front is with ties on the side and you have two ties on the inside, keeping it in place. Very loose, very comfortable to wear. Super easy to sew as well. There's no buttons, none of that. It is a relaxed fit. The shoulder is slightly dropped. There is a long sleeve on the original version and there's one patch pocket on the side, on the side that crosses over the other. You couldn't really have two because the other one would be covered because it overlaps on the front. The pant pattern is very easy to sew. It's only two pattern pieces. It's just a pyjama pant that fits really well to be a pyjama pant. And on the top, it's pull-on and it has an integrated casing. So you don't need to put an extra waistband or anything like that. It's all in the pattern piece and inside you put an elastic. Super easy to sew. Kenneth in the pattern test allowed us to shorten the sleeves and make shorts if we wanted to. So what have I been told? You know, I'm always wanting to do those things. So I've made two pyjama sets. One is short sleeves with shorts for now. And I've made another pair that is the original long sleeve, long pant. Because the Pine Cove pyjamas are a new release, you know that they are always at a discounted price for the first week. So it's always a good time to get a pattern when it's new because it costs less. If you like the pyjama while you're seeing the video and you would like to get it for yourself, you're very welcome to use my affiliate link that is all below. I make a little commission from there and that helps support the work that I do on this channel, bringing all this free content. So I'm very grateful if you do use it. Depending on the look that you're after and your weather, the type of season you're at, you could sew these in a huge variety of fabrics. As I mentioned, it is for woven fabrics, it isn't for knit. So if you want something really cozy, you could use flannel, that type of material. I know that satin backed with flannel exists as well, as well as cotton backed with flannel. These types of fabrics I do not have access to. I do have access to flannel, but I just don't like it because it's too hot. You could also use chambray, double gauze. I think a cotton lawn would be amazing. I don't have access to cotton lawn, but I have tested it on myself from thrifted clothing I have bought in the past. It's a beautiful fabric, nice and soft on the skin as well. So I think that's a good option. Now, if you are not looking after the really cozy feel, you can use lighter fabrics like rayon, rayon twill, satin, that sort of fabric. The fabrics I've chosen are a rayon twill. It is a really nice fabric because it's applied with checks. When you look at it from far away, it looks like it could be flannel. So it's going to have that classic pyjama look. 
but it won't give me that heat combustion that I'm gonna get with flannel. I just cannot stand that fabric. And with the short sleeve and short one, I used a satin, super soft, super luxurious, feels amazing on, I love the print. I think both fabrics worked really well. Of course, the satin was a little bit tricky to manipulate, just a little bit fiddly, but okay, and I really enjoy the results. As you know, I have a video on the channel talking all about cutting and sewing with slippery, silky type fabrics like satin. If you would like to try and sew yourself a really lax satin pajama and need more tips, you can check that video. I'll put the thumbnail here so you can see how it looks. Very comprehensive video, very comprehensive. Otherwise, you can stay with the more traditional fabrics that are easier to work with. You'll find sizing 00 to 40 US in this pattern. Even though it is a woven pattern, there aren't cup sizes in this specific design. It's just very loose fitting, it's a pajama. I don't really think you need that much shaping around your bust to go to sleep. <laughs> there is a lot of ease around here, so no bust cup size. The upper measurements are a 60 inch bust and a 62 inch hip. It's a roomy design, as I mentioned. You'll find about six inches of positive ease around the bust. At the waist, around 11. That's a nice amount of ease to be nice and comfortable. And then at the hips, about six to seven or eight, depending on the size that you're making. The pants also have quite a lot of ease, super comfortable, and it's a pattern that you can sew really relaxed, knowing that you're gonna have a really nice result. As most pajamas are, you know, most pajamas aren't supposed to be fitted and you don't have to worry about bust darts, hitting your bust height, that sort of thing. So, very enjoyable project. You'll find extensive finished garment measurements. The length of the top hits below the full hip, depending on your height, it's about 28 inches from the nape of your neck down and the pant has an inseam of about 30 inches. So I knew that for the top, I was going to make zero adjustments. I knew that from the get-go, just looking at the measurements, everything was perfectly fine. But the pants, even though they are pajamas, I know that I have a longer than standard rise. I know that from sewing a lot of pants. And if you get into the habit of sewing pant after pant after pant, you will really start seeing what your body is in comparison to a lot of other patterns. You can start seeing a pattern, a trend as such. I know I have a trend. I always have to lengthen the rise. Depending on the style and the brand, it might be more or less, but there's always some adjustments <laughs> needed. So I did what I do to every single pant pattern. I mentioned there was an integrated casing on the top of the waist of these pants. That measures one and three eighths at the top because you fold the pants once, three eighths, and then you fold it again an inch, and that makes your casing. So I don't count that. I drew my line, drew my seam allowance for the front and the back crotch curve. It's half an inch, drew it in red, drew my inseam, measured it, and decided I needed to add one inch to the front and to the back rise. Very easy adjustment. There is a short and a lengthened line there around the hip area. Very simple adjustments to make and very, very typical for me. Now it's important because they are pull on, they have an elastic. If I wouldn't have done these rise adjustments and just put them on, <laughs> that elastic is more and it's gonna go up to your waist anyway. It's gonna hike up there. It's not, they're not gonna stay low rise and I'll end up with a wedgie and other terrible things on the front. So I think you could get away with a longer rise than normal because they are pajamas. I think you can't get away with one that's shorter in my case just because I'm taller and I do have a really long rise for some reason it's just the way I am so I did those adjustments and for the legs I needed to add three inches I divided that into two sections I didn't want to add it all in one place I just didn't really want to deform the leg that much so there was a short and a lengthened line there that I used added one and a half inch there and then I added another one some distance below added the rest there and that's all the adjustments I had to do to the pants. These adjustments are my own personal fitting things. I wouldn't judge the quality of a pattern or anything based on that because that would be silly. <laughs> I know I'm tall and I know I have to add length to things. It would be very strange for me not to add length because I'm taller than standard. That would mean that everyone that has a height that's more common would have really long pants and a really long rise, you know, that sort of thing. It's all good. I'll do my adjustments and I'll be happy. I have a lot of sewing to show you today. I will show you my short sleeve shorts version. 
now so you can see what the pajama looks like. I'll show you how I shorten the sleeve and the shorts correctly for those hems to match. Here is my top. Here you can see the shoulder seam and my short sleeve and then we have this collar piece. The unique thing about this collar piece is how it finishes right here. It finishes in a rectangle shape and there is a tie coming from within that collar piece right there. So you have the same on both sides. These are four pieces that are cut out and there is a center back seam on this collar. There's no center back seam on the pajama as such. It's just one back piece that's cut on the fold. And then you have two fronts that have this shape like that because they do cross over. So this tie will be tied with this little tie that comes from the side seam. And inside, I'd run out of main fabric. <laughs> so I used a black tie on this side. And this one will tie inside with this other tie that's on this side seam there. On the right side seam, you have a tie coming from inside. And on the left side of you, the tie will be outside. All very well explained in the instructions, very easy to do. And then at the bottom, the hem is very straight. There is no curve here. And you have these little slits on the sides. They're super well finished inside. All the seams are serged separately and pressed open as per the instructions, not because I wanted to do it. If you follow along my videos and see how I like to sew, you know that I do like to press seams open and serge separately. That is a common practice for me in my own sewing. And to see that on a pattern, I was extremely happy about that. <laughs> These are the shorts. They're super pretty. They're just super simple. Two pattern pieces with the casing on the top. I have my elastic there super comfortable. I mentioned that the original pants have an inseam of about 30. My pants have one of 33 to be full length and I shortened these to be six and a half inseam. And then I have some hem allowance which was an inch. I'll insert here how to shorten the sleeves and the leg pants if you want to try this for yourself and how you can true that hem so that when you sew it it makes sense and you don't have any rippling and, and the hem not being correct because you can't just chop it and then sew it. You know, the, the pants have a little bit of a taper, so do the sleeves. You can't just chop something and hem it. You need to true that hem, and it's very important, and it's not part of the instructions at all. There's no guide for that. It's just that some of us did it because we were allowed, so <laughs> I'll show you how to do that now. I want to have a separate pattern piece for my short sleeves because I know I will be making the short sleeves more than the long sleeves i'm pretty sure of that i got my original piece that's long just traced it over some white paper i determined the length that i want over here you can see i have the seam allowance marked if you measure from the seam allowance that would be under the arm down i wanted the length to be around five and a half inches that will give me a sleeve length that's a little above my elbow and then i wanted one inch of hem allowance so i traced up to there on both sides and then I marked a line across, left one inch of hem allowance there. But I haven't cut this off because I need to true it. You can see the sleeve is slanting in. So you can't just cut this off and then try to hem it. You're not going to have enough length. You're going to end up with a sleeve hem that has puckers everywhere. So if you fold in this one inch of hem allowance, fold it in like you're going to sew it. And then cut these seams on the side you end up with a hem that's trued to shape. You can see the shape it takes there. That means that when you do the hem, the length on this area that's going to be above here is going to be the same. It's going to match the seams and you're going to have a very smooth hem. This is the exact same thing I'm going to do to the pant pattern pieces because I also want to do shorts. So I'll do the same for the back and the front legs and have my separate pattern pieces for those when I want to sew that option instead of the long pants. Now you'll see the pajama on. I'm prancing around outside. I've taken some photos using some props from outside. I had a giggle doing that. You'll see a lot of pictures from people in pajamas holding mugs of hot drink. I am not touching hot drink. It is sweltering. So I use different props. Let's see. Here is my summer version of the Pine Cove pajamas. I've shortened the sleeves, I've shortened the pants, have shorts and short sleeves. This is a satin, super silky, super cold on the skin. Feels amazing on. I love these colors and I love this contrast black band. It just highlights the features. So I think shortening the sleeve to there and the shorts to there is good for what I like. And I'm super happy with the fit. 
little ties here I'll show you up closer there are ties inside underneath here that tie it up inside so that's hidden you can't see that and these are the ties that you can see I have ties made in the same fabric for these ones the ones that you can't see inside are black so you can tie this up however tight or loose you want it to be super easy to wear you don't have to worry about buttons or anything shorts are comfortable with an elastic band just pull on and wear that's how it looks on the back there's plenty of room for you to move around slits right there lovely I love it this is a collar that finishes in a rectangle shape right there and the ties come from inside there tied up here this tie is in the side seam this tie is in the collar and you have the same thing going on but only inside under there so you can't see that I think the crossover here is really good you're not showing anything so very nice it lies perfect I really love these pyjamas, they're just so original, so different to any other woven pyjama I haven't been wanting to sew because, you know, like traditional collars and notched necklines and buttons, I think they just don't belong in pyjamas in my opinion for how I want to sleep. This is just so loose and so comfy and just pretty to wear around the house as well, really like it. you found that fun to watch I wish I could share my mangoes with you we are eating like no tomorrow we are also freezing and making this sort of pulp we learned how to make I want to show you now with the official version of the pajamas my plaid check rayon twill version in the sewing department I'm going to show you how to sew the collar and the ties it's actually the only technique that you would dedicate a tiny bit of your time to with these pajamas it's not hard at all but why not share? So let's see. Don't you think this is starting to wear on me? You've been raining down like hail on a week. Here are all the pieces needed to make the pyjama top. These are the two front pieces. The neckline has been stabilized with fusible interfacing instead of stay stitching. That center front area has, has already been pressed folded twice so that that's ready to go when it's time to sew. I'm doing one pocket that is cut on the bias. The pattern just has one pocket. I cut it on the bias and interfaced it. My fabric is not that sturdy to hold up. If I didn't interface it, the pocket would look really saggy. That's the sleeve. The two collar pieces that are actually four they need to be sewn on the center back there it's four pieces and they make two pairs and then we have four little ties and the back piece that's cut on the fold i've also already prepared the pocket it's really easy to press this fabric so on top you fold it twice by half an inch press it then we need to sew that down and then the other three edges we need to press them in by half an inch i'm still going to go ahead and serge these edges because i haven't done that yet but I'm actually going to leave the pocket till the very end, although the instructions have it at the beginning. I just want to put the top on to mark where I want my pocket to be on me. There's one paper for the collar pieces, but you have to cut four. So it's just two pairs. I've got two there and two there. And they have a set of notches along the top edge here. There's some slanted notches. I hope you can see those little slanted notches there, 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 there. And that's just to signify the placement of the ties later on. So those slanted notches are on one extreme here. On this way, on this other short end, I have already pinned it there because this is a center back seam. And along this bottom edge here, there's a notch here that will match the shoulders and that notch will match sort of the center area of the neckline. So you basically need to sew these two together, extend it. The important thing is that I have marked these with a pink coloring pencil because my markings won't erase when I have to iron certain areas but it's just about sewing these back seams and pressing them open when we start doing this collar. These pyjama pants only have two pieces, a back and a front, that is all and here on the top 
at the waist area there's a longer section that is folded in to form a casing to put the elastic it's folded in 3 8 and then folded again one inch my rayon twill is exactly the same on both sides so again I've just scribbled with chalk to make sure I don't get confused and I know what is my right and what is my wrong so that's how the ties look there the edge stitched and one of them was open like that, now it's closed and the other one's just folded. It's a nice sturdy tie, much easier than when you have to sew a long tie right sides together along one end and then flip it with a safety pin. I like this because it looks nice and flat and neat. Here are the collar pieces, two pairs. I've got them pinned here where they need to be sewn. Here you can see the notch up closer that's going to match the shoulder seam and the one that's going to match the one that's on the half point of the neckline that's on this long end on this long end towards the end here we have these slanted little marks that's where the ties are going to be placed later but for now we need to sew these and then do a guide stitch to help press this long end that has the shoulder notch and the neckline notch this one needs to be pressed in towards the wrong side by half an inch that is the seam allowance used and I like doing that with a guide stitch because it just helps me press more accurately rather than trying to measure all the way or just doing it by eyeballing. So we're sewing these short ends half an inch seam allowance. I'm just going to finger press these seams open for now and do the guiding stitch along the edge that has the little notches the notch for the neckline that end not this one that one <laughs> that's the one that's going to be folded in by half an inch stitch length is 4.5 so i can remove it later super easily and i'll just follow along at half an inch repeat and do the same on the other long collar piece okay so now I'll just go to the ironing board finish pressing this open properly and then pressing this long end inside towards the wrong side and that stitch that I have there is going to help me do it super accurately once I've got them both pressed along this edge I'll just remove that stitch I have the two collar pieces extended here on my table they are pretty long one of them here is right sides up I've got the folded edge right under there. The other one is wrong sides up. These will end up going right sides together, one on top of each other. We will need to sandwich these ties on each of these ends. This is one end of the collar and all the way over there, a long way away is the other end. You will see these slant notches right there, these marks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this collar piece on top of the other so that they're right sides together. I've got them on top of each other and I'll just meet them all the way to the other end, meeting those center back seams. Now take these ties, these ties have raw ends right there and they have finished ends. The raw end is the one that's gonna go tucked in there. Here you can see those slants, right? That one and that one. I'm gonna slide my tie in between the ends here, following that shape of that slant. You don't wanna put your tie going straight, it needs to be at that slanted angle, just following that shape like that. Okay, here you see the whole extension of the collar piece, how long it is. It is sort of folded in the center or else it would hang off the table. Over on this other side is that we have these little slanted notches as well. So we'll just do the same thing. Grab the end of the tie that has the raw edges and slide it in between both collar pieces. Make sure the ends meet here and that you follow that angle of the slant. You can let a little bit of the tie protrude there. I think it's just easier like that. So when you've done that, make sure that your ties are slanted going out like that. Same as on this side, the tie is slanted going like that. Now we just need to pin both of these collar pieces together along the short end, including those little folded edges, all the way across the top, making sure everything matches, all the way across and then down like that. And that is going to be sewn at half an inch seam allowance. When we sew, we are going to be catching those little ties there on those sections. Here's a closer look at the collar piece. It's all been pinned. These are the folded edges. Here, both sides these are right sides together with the tie sandwiched in between following the slant there of the marks so you can see it slanting outward like that and here's the other side so we're going to start here I've put a pin to hold these two folded edges together and then all the way across the top and then down the other short end there
center seams of the collar pieces that are matching. Make sure this doesn't flip underneath when you're sewing there. I sold there and there that's where I fold it onto each other hold it and just flip it and it's really sharp so now I'm gonna go to the iron I'll be careful to not undo these crease marks there I'll just press this center seam open it's a really long seam and just tidy this up press it nicely then we can leave this aside so we can start working on the top sewing the shoulder seams together what you see here is the wrong side of the fabric facing up and I've even written down there wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> you can also see the interfacing there signifying wrong. I've put a pin on the center back. Now I like to sew collars and bands in reverse because then when I flip and need to top stitch I can see what I'm doing on the right side of the fabric. So what we need to do now is take this collar piece it's been pressed together but you need to extend and open it. Find where the center seam is on the collar, match it to the center back of the neckline where I have the pin. And now we need to keep pinning, matching the notches everywhere. So I'm just going to take my time to pin everything. This end here that has the tie is going to finish right on this slant right here. But because this fold has already been pressed and sewn inside, it's impossible to sew right up to the edge when you open this up. So I'm going to open it and pin it as far as I can get, but we're not going to be able to start right on the edge. It'll be a little bit further, but it doesn't matter. I'll show you what happens later, but I'm just going to take my time and pin from one of these extremes to the other. Then when this is sewn and this is flipped, this edge is going to be inside tucked in like that. Basically we're going to pin right side of collar to wrong side of the top. So along the crease that's already been pressed like that. That's a seam allowance. And then we're going to flip it all to the right side. And then that's how it's going to be top stitched and when we can see it. So lots of pinning to do and I'll be back. Okay, so I've taken the time to pin accurately from these points here where you don't have full access to sew up to the very end. I've pinned as much as I can, I think up to there, then that gets in the way. But it doesn't matter, this is going to go tucked into there and I've made sure that the collar piece reaches the very end of that. So you saw that I pinned that there first to make sure that's at the right spot, then I flip it and then with my fingers I fiddle and I fiddle to make sure this stays the same, nice and smooth. Although I can't sew it, it is the correct distance from there to the point there. When we're sewing, we need to keep this out of the way. So we're just sewing this down with the collar extended. Here you will see a notch on the collar that matches the neckline there. And then further up, you have the notch that matches the shoulder seam. Same as on this side and then the other neckline one there. And on this side, I've done the same. So um, I know that when this is sewn and flipped and everything, this is going to be coming right out of there. But I'm going to start sewing from there. That's as much access I can get. Sew along that crease there. Remember, I'm working right side of the collar to wrong side of the fabric. The instructions say to do it the other way, to put the right side on the right side of the fabric and then flip to the inside and top stitch. I, look, I like doing it in reverse because I think it's just neater if you can see what you're doing on the front. At the other side I put a pin horizontally at the furthest where I could sew having access so I'll just stop right there okay 
so that's sewn. Now what we'll do is press the seam allowance towards the collar. This is the right side of the pajama top. We'll just bring this collar over to the right side of the fabric and cover that seam. And this section was only partially sewn, but we can just tuck this little section in there. And when I hand baste this down, I'm just going to reinforce that area with hand basting. And then when I top stitch, I'm just going to catch it all in one go and it'll catch that section and that small section at the back that isn't sewn on already. So you can see from there on it's sewn. So that's what's going to happen now. We'll just press the seam allowance that way and then cover this seam. And of course, I'll be doing some hand basting this down and then top stitching it. Same thing happens with this other end over here. You can see that's partially unsewn there. But when we bring the collar piece over to the right side of the top, we can just tuck that all in there and catch it all when we top stitch, catching the back there. Okay, so we are looking at the right side of the top here. You can see that stitching inside and how with the hand basting, I have managed to catch that area that hadn't been sewn on. It's gonna be fine. I've done these stitches like that just to hold this together so it does not come out and this hand basting goes all the way around. Now remember we sewed here and flipped over to the right side of the top so I'm going to be top stitching where it's going to be visible. And over here I've done the same. I've hand basted that section that catches it all in very neatly and also done some hand tacking like that just to keep that together. I'll be sewing like this with the presser foot that helps me sew on the edge super neatly all the way to the other end. So I love this presser foot. It's neat on both sides, on the inside and on the outside. And if you see that I did my hand basting a little bit further, then I knew that the presser foot would sew so that now it's easy to just pull out. Here is my pajama top made out of plaid, checks. I was super, super careful. I knew what I wanted. And actually when patterns say you need more fabric to get things to match, you need a lot more fabric. I use more than what I'm comfortable with to get this to look the way I want it to. You can see this wrap section there has the red stripe going down the center. So when it wraps, when you look at this on, you have a red stripe in the center on the front and also on the back. I took great care to have that happen. And then you have red, red, red. So that was the first thing I wanted to match. I wanted those reds to be in the center like that. Then I went ahead and matched the side seams. So I have the side seams matching very, very well there on both sides. It took an extra time to achieve this on the sides. The sleeves, you can't match the sleeves. Look, these checks are rectangles, they're not squares. So you can't match them here on the armhole. So. I didn't really worry about matching on the armhole, but I have the red stripe going there. I filmed the whole sewing of these pajamas for Patreon just now, like yesterday I finished editing and uploading it all there. And I went into great details about plaid matching and all the matching that's all on Patreon. Just know that it took me a while and lots of pins. <laughs> when you match the sides and you achieve matching the sides, you are obviously going to match the shoulders because they are the same. So you don't need to match the shoulders as such if your side seams match, they are going to match. This little pocket here on the side is just for decoration. I cut it on the bias, have interfaced it there. I will never ever use it, it's just decoration. And of course I hand basted it on, I did all the precautions. The pattern has you do this as one of the first steps and there are reference points on the paper pattern for you to put it on. 
but I left it to the very, very, very end when I could try on my pajama, put it on myself and place it where I wanted it to be. So that's where it is and I'm happy with that. If I'm extra shiny today, it's just, I'm extra sweaty. It's just too hot, ladies. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the pants, I've got my pants here. Look, these pants fit so well. I could wear them as outerwear. I could put a nice blouse and go out with my heels. They are amazing. Rayon twill in black. I didn't want to be dressed up in plaid from head to toe. I just could not deal with that. I'm just warming up to these checks. I'm warming up. I've never been a fan that much. I do like them for pajamas and this is a first step for me to have it in a top. I feel happy having the black pants and the top in a plaid, <laughs> if you get what I mean. The fabric is exactly the same. It's a rayon twill. It's the same type of fabric. It's just very simple. So, so easy to sew. I have a full sew along that's super beginner friendly in a pant that is exactly this type of construction. I will link it down below. It's one of my most watched videos here on YouTube for some reason. <laughs> if you want to see how to sew them, they are sewn in that exact same way. Uh, only that it's different fitting adjustments, different brand, all those things, but the actual steps are pretty much the same. So super roomy at the waist. These are perfectly perfectly comfortable you pull them on you have an elastic that's not too wide it uses an elastic that's 5 eighths of an inch wide I like that I wouldn't want to have a really thick elastic here and I've just top stitched it once because that's all that you can fit really in that width there of that casing now let's see the one I'm mostly excited to share with you I'm so proud of this make I know it's just pajamas but I put my best effort into them and whenever I do that, I feel really happy to have done that. I never regret going the extra mile when I'm sewing. Um, I really love sewing, if you can't tell. And when I get projects like this that can just be a little bit extra like that, I am always for it. I love doing things like this and I wouldn't hesitate to start matching plaids and stripes again because it's fun, it's fun. It forces you to slow down a little bit. So let's see. Here is my pine cone pajamas that are the original version, like the pattern is supposed to be with long sleeves. I did add one and a half inches to the sleeves for the length. I added three inches for the length of the legs and one inch on the front and back rise to the pant. The fabric is rayon twill and actually this pant I could perfectly wear it outside like outerwear with like a normal blouse and not the pajama top. I really like this. I'm just starting to warm up to plaid and I thought I could cope with a top made out of plaid but not the whole pyjama outfit. These black pants will also go with my satin version that you've already seen in the short one. It will match and this collar piece is made with the same rayon twill that the pants are. Same as the satin set that I've already shown you. Love the pants, they fit so well with a rise adjustment, so good and I'll show you this up close. I really wanted this red to go in the center of my body and then this red to come over here. You can see some red on the sleeves there too. So I really wanted to do that. I played a lot with the pattern placement to be able to do that so that it makes sense. All the plaid on the sides match everywhere, as you can see there. I did interface this pocket to give it some structure or else it would just be super floppy because rayon twill is pretty flowy no pocket on this side this side also matches and if you look at this seam on the sleeves that matches too so yeah at the back i also have a red stripe going down the center of the body i really wanted that to happen too so cutting out face took extra long with this one comfy comfy pants with elastic so nice here you can see the contrast collar it's sewn in there super neat I like a contrast so that you can see the feature of the wrap and I certainly did not want to match the plaid of any type here on this type of collar. You can see the shoulders match as well. You can see that matching right there. Both sides. I'm just showing off because it took me so long to do and I'm so proud. <laughs> I'm super happy with my pajamas. I think they look like classic pajamas. They look like flannel pajamas but I just can't stand flannel. I would combust. So having that look of cozy and traditional style but in a rayon twill feels amazing on. It is nice and warm for when it starts getting cooler next year. I am headed into summer right now. 
so I am melting to put this on for you and show you <laughs> but I'm very happy with these PJs they are super original well drafted they fit amazing they're really interesting to sew and you can make them your own with whatever fabrics you want you know lots of options for fabrics I'm really happy with my fabric choice this rayon twill is just perfect for it I love it flowy feels nice and it is a fabric I would be able to lounge around in and sleep in for sure so huge thumbs up from me for these pajamas highly recommend I really enjoy them I think they're just super unique and no buttons none of that easy to sew lovely love them made any of these two I always knew I wanted to make that collar piece in a contrast so that you could see the detail of this pajama I think if it was made in the same print you wouldn't really see that crossover it would just look like something <laughs> so I made this collar in the same rayon twill I made the pants and because secretly I always knew I could wear them together as well the top with the long pants and I could wear this with the short satin ones as well so yeah, let's see how these look together too. I can use my long pant pyjamas for both of these tops. Short sleeve satin one that I made shorts for can also go with this. I made sure to make the collar piece out of the same fabric as the pants so that it does make sense. And plus I like the look of an opaque band instead of a satin one. I really didn't like that look. So I have another option here. One pair of pants, two tops and one short and I can get another look like this. Saturn version had its challenge because of the type of fabric was just flying away from me and sliding everywhere and then this fabric that is easier to manipulate took me extra time because of the matching <laughs> so you know if you choose different types of fabrics these could be so fast and easy to make they are it's just that I made it harder on myself by choosing these types of challenges you don't have to do that I just did it because I wanted to I think this is a great project that you could sew for someone super close to you that will appreciate your handmade gift it would be a really really nice gift to give a woman in your life that you love I would love to make this for my mom and my sister-in-law my mother-in-law Unfortunately, I am not traveling back home this summer due to COVID. I'm staying here and this will be the first Christmas and New Year's I spend without them in years. Actually, it's quite sad. Oh, well, we will have to talk on the phone even more. But this is definitely a gift I would make the women that I love. I'd love to know your thoughts about pajamas. I already stated that I don't like those really formal ones with collars and buttons and facings and pipings. No, I don't like them. But they are very popular, they sell them everywhere, I know people make them. Let me know what you think about them. You might love them, I just don't. That's why when I saw this one, I was very excited to sew it. This design that was different, that was unique, it was original and something that I would enjoy sewing and wearing. I'm very, very tempted to make one in a knit also because I think it's perfectly doable if you just size down and use some really soft flowy knit. My wardrobe there is full of rayon spandex I could make a nice pyjama with, so I might do it, I might do it. I'm very, very tempted. Have a look at the website if you want to see more details. The pattern is on sale on its release week. You could get it now for less if you like it. If you use my affiliate link to purchase your pyjama, I would be very grateful. I make a small commission from there and that helps support me. It doesn't cost you any extra. You will see a video from me very, very, very soon. Also related to loungewear, something you put on top of things. Just giving you a hint. Keep your eyes open, turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next video because it will be coming up very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon as I said. Bye.